U.S. history. According to authorities, the Visa Syndicate for years fooled millions of Americans by issuing convincing-looking credit cards carefully designed to dupe consumers into spending far more money than they had. Investigators believe the fraudulent corporation also lured victims in with enticing programs and free gifts, thereby trapping them in a spiral of debt they could never hope to Distrust repay. in. According to the results of a <laughs> study, 96% of humans would rather be a singing, dancing... How come my third, lower third is always blurry? The great majority of people um, on the planet make would prefer sure, to I don't trade see in you have a lower third right now, but if you do... Right now, I'm, I'm putting it on right now, but it sure. always comes on blurry. Sure on make sure your bandwidth is all the way up. Respondents Sometimes that's the issue. You can adjust your bandwidth. Oh, I was going to ask you how you do that. Because I have a logo for Lehigh Valley Cop Lock that's in high quality. Here we go, guys. Cop Lock Radio. Join us online at copblock.org slash show. We've got a chat room there plus video where you can watch and interact with other listeners. You can also listen at lrn.fm and check out all our past episodes at coplock.org slash podcast. So, hey, I am Derek J. Across the inner tubes, we have... Dio. And I am Severin from Lehigh Valley Coplock. Yeah. So, uh, we represent coplockers from all around the world. And you can get interactive and call in, share your stories about police accountability. We've got tons to share with you this evening, some really exciting, fun ones, and some not-so-fun ones uh, that are really sad, honestly. But, you know, we will get to those in just a moment. We've got the fun stuff first, so stay tuned. You can call in. Our number is 413-418-COPS. It's 413-418-2677. You can also Skype into the program. Cop Block Radio is our Skype username. Just send a user friend request there. Uh, we'll get connected, and then from there, it'll be easy to call in any time, and you'll sound so lovely, like you're right in studio with us. So um, right off the bat, I wanted to share with the audience something that Severin brought up last week which was the story of the Allentown man who was brutally taken down for singing outside of a restaurant. Here's a story um, coming to us from The Morning Call. Take a listen to this. They actually don't even talk about the singing mm -hmm. man the story. Waiting for a bus on the steps of a corner store at 6th and Tillman Streets last summer when Allentown police officer Andrew Holvec approached him. Holvec was concerned that Vasquez was intoxicated to a degree that he was a danger to himself and others, the officer wrote in court papers, and began to ask him questions. Vasquez alleges in an excessive force lawsuit against Allentown and Holvec that what should have been a routine welfare check quickly escalated into a violent arrest that left Vasquez with psychological trauma and bruises and scrapes across his hands and face. This Allentown police surveillance video of the July 26 arrest, released by Vasquez's attorney Richard J. Orlowski, shows Holvec reacting as Vasquez reaches into his right pocket for a cigarette. Holvec grabs Vasquez by the wrist and then pulls him from the steps to the sidewalk behind a trash bin which obscures the camera's view of all but Vasquez's right leg. Then, two unidentified police officers approach to assist Holvec in the arrest. Stop resisting! One of the officers bends over behind the trash bin and throws three punches towards Vasquez on the ground. Wow. With each punch, the unidentified officer's arm and elbow are seen popping up from behind the trash bin. This guy's way bin. too mellow for what's happening Five on officers camera. in all responded to the scene. Jesus! Christ. Vasquez, 28, of the 500 There's block five of North cops Street, on this dude. Was what did he reach for a cigarette? Including a black eye. Mm -hmm. Wow, how dangerous. His face, a Talk about protecting hospital. a man from himself. He pleaded guilty last month to disorderly conduct and was sent to the guilty? Why would he plead Charged guilty? Because they trump up your charges in that town mm -hmm. and they try to get you to plead oh. to something so they don't get sued. Yeah, he pled just to, said to Tuesday disorderly. He posted the video to YouTube and Facebook in an effort to locate witnesses. Yeah. And I'm sure the guy's defense attorney probably talked him into it, too. 
Yes, yeah, no, actually, Orlowski is uh, he's the one that's representing the singing guy. He's representing four different people right now in lawsuits against Allentown. So and the same, same lawyer who's representing... I thought this was video of the singing guy. Just, sorry about that. But this is somebody else. He was reaching into his pocket. He was sitting on his stoop in Allentown. Yeah, it, what's, 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 really, what's really significant about this story is finally... Yeah. Finally, the mainstream media is saying perhaps there might be a problem in Allentown. Yeah, I'll say. I mean, damn, you hear about stories like this all over the place um, all the time. It, it happens everywhere, but not with the frequency that I'm hearing about Allentown. You'd think Allentown's it, like a big city or something. How many people in Allentown? It, it's like a, it's, it's one a of the major cities in, Al in Pennsylvania. It's, it's, got, it's got a lot of history behind it. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's really, not New York City. That's it, man. You, hear, you hear about as many stories as come out of New York City from Allentown. You think it's a it's a quiet, sleepy vacation town or something, but their, their cops are out of control. So what do well, you attribute this? This this is your hood, right? This is what's happening in Allentown right now. Is you got a mayor that's indicted by the FBI that doesn't care, basically that knows he's on his way out, knows he's on his way to a jail cell. He's indicted. Uh, yeah, he's he's up brought up on charges by the FBI. They For got what? they got uh, taken bribes, pay to play. Uh, so the politician, I mean, is that? Yeah. <laughs> it's not real surprising. But what is messed up is this guy is checked out. He doesn't care what's happening in his own town. Then you got a city council that's pretty much uh, the same way. They just know that their town is the laughing stock of the entire area because uh, FBI just raided their city hall. Like they're they're just a joke and. Now, the police are just not being held accountable at all. The police chief is actually on his way out the door because of how bad it is there. He's he's not getting fired. He's leaving before he gets fired, basically. He's trying to run away. Right. So well, these cops are just plain and simple out of control. Well, thank and you for sharing what's going on in your hood. I want to share a video about what's going on in my hood. I just moved to San Francisco. Check out these cops talking in a donut shop. Of all places, right? <laughs> yeah, go figure that the cops are hanging out in donuts. Yeah, right. All right, it's kind of hard to hear them, but you can see them. He's saying, what you want on video is the guy holding the gun still pointed at you and being blown to bits. And here's how the other cop he's talking to responds. Oh, yeah. You don't want to get that brain splatter all over you. Yeah. His head splattered all over the place. Isn't that funny? Boy, this is how the cops are talking about you. You know, the, the people they claim to serve and protect. This is my neighborhood. This is cops talking about me. You know, and you know, I don't use violence to solve problems. That's what they do. I use a video camera to hold them accountable. And it looks like some local hero actually took video over his shoulder while he's sitting in the donut shop saying, hey, I don't, I don't think I like what these cops are talking about. I'm going to record these public servants while they're on duty. You know, they are wearing their uniform and badge. So they are claiming to be public servants, right? And this is, this is how they talk about it. I thought they were on duty 24-7 nowadays, ain't it? I don't know. I never heard. I mean, that. how what the, how terrifying! Like, what what if this wasn't? Obviously, the person sitting behind him had a little bit of intelligence to pull out a video camera. But yeah. what if this was just some regular mom and dad little family in San Francisco trying to take their kids out, and they're overhearing two cops that talking about blowing somebody away, and then every news station is going to talk about the war on cops. Well, I gotta say, thank I'm, goodness for people who record the cops. You know, thank goodness for these people who are uploading videos and, and surreptitiously recording too. You think these cops would talk like that if they knew they were being recorded? I mean, good on this guy for being a, a little bit sneaky about it. I'm not saying to, to surreptitiously record it, everybody or, or people, but when they're public servants and they're operating on your dime without asking for your permission, and then they treat people this way? I mean, God, it's your responsibility to record and publish this stuff. But so don't, for, don't forget, Derek, it's not their fault. Somebody altered that video, as all the cop lovers will tell you. <laughs> Every video has been altered, and everything is all The cops are just the victims here. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Big war on cops that killed 800 people since January. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I named this episode... 
cops suck donkey balls. Um, because we're gonna we're gonna talk. I mean, we've got a lot of videos of bad cops. Uh, you know, sometimes we we talk about ways that you can push back. Also, what was the other thing? I wanted to talk about uh, how you can confront cops without getting your ass kicked. And there's a lot of people who do it pretty well. Um, coming up, we're gonna talk about painting cops all with uh, the same broad brush. Pete Air, how I notified a cop's neighbor of his misconduct. Stop a douchebag in Russia confronts Russian police. That video is hilarious and kind of soon. Um, Oklahoma police likely to execute an innocent man. Got the story from Reason.com. Plus a history of good cop, bad cop tactics. And finally, stop being an enabler for a cop in the family. Do you have a cop in your family? Are you friends with someone who's a cop? We'll talk about all that and more. Top Lock Radio. If you have a business, you know that IT can be frustrating. But it... Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, so, like, really, how does that make you feel knowing that you live in San Francisco and those two guys are still Not on the floors, probably? Not good, man. I don't like that. Because I'm thinking about, like, I'm going to be video recording these guys, and what what I want to do in my neighborhood now that I've moved here, I'm so comfortable with the Keen police. Like they're used to me filming them. I, I'm used to being behind the camera. We have a a, a frenemy relationship. Here in um, California, none of the cops know me, and it's so much bigger that it's unlikely that we'll ever have the same kind of relationship that I had in Keen. So. What I'm thinking is creating sort of like a cop block chapter in San Francisco where one of our main regular goals is not just going to be to do video recording the police, which is totally important, but relationship building. Like breakfast with a cop is what I'm thinking. We go to McDonald's down the street on Haight Street where all the hippies hang out. And we start a thing. I see the cops there all the time. They're grabbing breakfast, and I've gotten coffee there a couple of times. So why not have breakfast and a coffee with some cops you know, I'm not buying them breakfast or anything, but at least we can start to open that, um, open those relationships so that it's not just like them versus us. I want to, I want to be on a first name basis with some of the people who are patrolling my streets, so I can say, hey, there's no problem here. Why don't you leave them alone, Joe? Or you know, and use their first name, and they would know me. You know, so I think they're a little less likely to shoot me if they know that I'm going to be video recording. They, they know you're there, dude. <laughs> Nah, they don't know. <laughs> they got the memo. Yeah. Who just joined us? Hey! Oh, and Brian! Ah, what's going on? Not much. How are you guys doing? Good. I yeah. waited to play uh, the Mac video. Word. So maybe I'll play that one once we come back. Your video is not on, Adima. Got two minutes. Sounds cool. Your video is kind of on, but it looks a little bit frozen. You got uh, you connected to some Wi-Fi? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't see any video right now. Well, it's, I don't know to tell you. Click the little video tab. I did. Now it's off. Now it's on. Hmm. I got none. There yeah. it is. Now it's on. But I don't see it in my box. There you go. Yeah, I said my box. You got a box? <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. See? Sorry, we got... This is a very sexual show. We're talking very openly about this kind of thing. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, Derek, uh, was, Derek was just talking about the porn picture he put up for our last <laughs> week's uh, radio show. I don't know. Yeah. I, it's true. Adamo, I got a, a picture of someone licking a boot from a porn website. <laughs> just, <laughs> just said it was uh, a cop sucker. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brian, how you doing? Good to see you. I'm um, well, Derek. How are you, man? I'm good. I've been thinking about you a lot since I've been in your hood. Oh, yeah? I'm flattered. Although, the, as soon as I arrived, you left. I know. I was kind of, uh, I was actually minorly upset about that myself. I was like, damn. Oh, I'm minorely sad. upset. I'm heartbroken. I'm oh. like, picture with a demo. I can't be, like, too sad. Yeah, that's true. You guys are having fun. Uh, I saw, a, you know, good, good, beautiful pictures of you and your girl, too, that look really nice. Yeah. Happy. Guys are, Sad, but, uh, guys yeah, she's hanging in there. Hey, Derek! I told you there's room for one more in here. I know. I, I, um, I, you wouldn't believe it. I'm ready to join a cult just to get an apartment in this city. It's <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you about our cult. 
<laughs> we filmed the police. You're already a member. All right. Here we go. <laughs> this is the Liberty Radio Network. Broadcasting I'm going to start with your Liberty video. Liberty audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. All right, welcome back to Cop Block Radio, everybody. You can call in 413-418-COPS or Skype Cop Block Radio. Joining us now is Adamo Freeman and Brian Sumner in Mac. What is Mac? Let me explain with this listen video. Up, listen up. If you ain't locking up the bad cops, you ain't good enough. So where they at? Where they at? The crime for people is just a failure to act by all these good cops. So where they at? Where they at? If you're dirty and you need someone to cover your back, you need a good cop. So where they at? Where they at? You'll never see a snitch on someone wearing a badge because they the good cops. So listen up, listen up. If you ain't locking up the bad cops, you ain't good enough. Hello, everyone. I'm Adamo Freeman, founder of CopLock.org as well as a CopLock Network contributor. And I'm Brian David Sumner, founder of the Fresno Liberty Movement, as well as a CopLock Network contributor. The song you were just listening to by Rob Hustle asks, where are all the good cops? <laughs> we're not entirely sure there are any more good cops. Would a good cop really participate in such things as police checkpoints, no-knock raids, extortion, murder, and other egregious behavior that's unacceptable for anyone who doesn't wear a uniform? And since we don't think good cops do such terrible things, we're going to take to the road and prove it. Armed with a variety of educational materials, HD cameras, and tech gear, a demo and I will travel the country in Mac, the mobile accountability for cops RV. Mac is a 24-foot RV that I recently purchased outright by offering advertising to several liberty and police accountability-oriented organizations. For the next seven months, it will be our home, office, and response vehicle as we hit the road. At the end of September, a demo and I will roll out in Mac, from southern Ohio with stops and cop block hotspots like Illinois, Iowa, Oklahoma, Texas, California, Arizona, Colorado, and a few places in between. Aside from filming the police, which we'll do plenty of, we'll also be embedding ourselves with some of the most active cop blockers in the country. Together, we'll conduct outreach in local communities, create original content, organize meetups, and cop blocking events on a regular basis. Our goal is to leave behind a wave of people who are not only more knowledgeable and aware of their rights regarding the police, but also in a better position to be able to act upon police brutality should they ever encounter heavy-handed cops. We're definitely reaching more minds than ever, and if you'd like to be a part of this fast-growing network, check the link in the description below to find out more. But for now, we're heading out to play our part of bringing police accountability to a department near you. Meow. All right, copblock.org to find out more. Uh, so joining us now is uh, Damo and Brian from the video. Uh, very exciting. Music got me pumped up. That's right. Oh, oh, giving us uh, his new beat that's coming out soon uh, called Good Cops. Should be pretty interesting. Yeah. Oh, I like it. Yeah. I can't wait so, to. I, I'm I'm jamming out to the whole video or the whole song all the time over here. <laughs> It's the bomb. So has it begun? Where are you guys now? Well, right now we're in southern Ohio, and uh, we're finalizing some of the uh, foundational aspects and, like, uh, you know, low-hanging fruit type stuff that has to get done. Uh, today we bought an A-frame trailer hitch in order to pull Forrest, the car, uh, behind Mac, which will help us, like, maximize our reach and range and effectiveness. Uh, Brian worked on a blog post today that'll do the launch, and I was working on the uh, the uh, the Mac page. That's uh, coplock.org slash Mac. Radical dudes. Hey, I like that Mac has its own presence. It's got its own YouTube channel. It's got its own website. Uh, so is that where I should be following updates? I mean, I'm sure they're going to be posted to coplock.org as well, but if I'm interested in just what you guys are doing, I can follow that at coplock.org slash Mac. That's right. Mac will be the the page with a little bit of overview and the ways to you know find out you know what we're up to now, our, our next stops, and our most recent content. Um, and then the YouTube channel is definitely where where you will find all our video content. Uh, the Cop Block Network Facebook page is where you can probably get the updates. You know, uh, uh, it, pictures, photos from on the road, shorts, little videos of you know Brian and I chilling in and Mac and uh, whatnot. So the Cop Block. Is where we'll have that on Facebook, but yes, YouTube will have our own Mac 
channel. Any encounters with pigs yet? Not yet. I mean, uh, we might go down to Cincy this weekend, but Brian got in, what, last week? I, I got in the 11th, man, so I've only been here a few days. Yeah, and so we spent one day doing the video script and then, you know, getting settled. We got all the gear that Dio sent down to us, placed all up in the, the little air booths around in the, the RV, so... In the past, cops have been informed when you're in the area, Demo. Do you have any indication that the police have been informed of your route? Well, we just made the uh, schedule live on both the, uh, or at least on the uh, page. So, you know, they're always fans of the website, which I appreciate. And so uh, if they're reading it, they know. And like it said in the video, you know, uh, Iowa, Oklahoma, Texas, uh, California, Nevada, Colorado. We're definitely going to hit up those places. And any police department, any police officer on the way is uh, is subject to filming. So what about the, do you what anticipate about the first any... Uh, what? what was that? I say, what about the first stop? Where's the first stop going to be? Do I think it? Uh, well, the first stop uh, is going to be Iowa City. And that's a weekend stop. And what? Yeah, we, just a weekend in Iowa. We're going to do a meetup in a cop block night, and we're going to link up with uh, some cop block contributors over there, uh, Josh Hodgkin. Yeah, Josh Hodgkin is from Iowa City, and so it's also a college town. And so not only will we get to link up with him and uh, help promote the Ryan Bollinger case, which is uh, a man who was shot for walking with a purpose towards a armed thug. So we'll ha ha And Dio and I went out there to help uh, do a protest with Josh for that. So we're going to touch base on that and saturate a college college campus while uh, school is in session. So it should be a good first stop. We are going to hit um, Indianapolis and uh, just outside of Chicago for another cop lock contributor, Ryan Scott. So the first uh, October 1st is when we plan to be in Iowa City, but on the 25th we plan to leave Ohio. How can people reach out to you if they're like, oh, hey, I think uh, Mac is going to be in my area. I want to join up and, and go cop locking with these guys. So how should they reach you? Yeah, if people, again, they can check the schedule at coplock.org slash Mac, uh, and on that page they'll find uh, you know not only the social networks where they can link up with us, but uh, a way to contact us, coplock.org slash contact. So I'm kind of busting balls a little bit. I, I, I put my lower third as cops suck donkey balls, and you know, we're going to talk about painting with a broad brush in, in a couple of segments, but you know, in all seriousness, I know there are some cops who are legit fans of what Coplock does. They think it's going to make the police department better. It gives them hope uh, for, for a more peaceful and voluntary future. There was a caller like Straight Razor who calls in and actually left his job in, in Texas. Um, because he, he just couldn't stand locking people up for victimless crimes. Do you have any people reaching out to you like, hey, come to our police department, do some cop locking here? Well, yeah, already when uh, Brian posted the video to the Cop Lock Network Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash cop lock network, um, there was already an immediate, the first comment was, come to somewhere Minnesota, do you remember? But uh, um, he, he also commented on the YouTube channel and uh, um, messaged message. me as well, so... Yeah, even though it's only been out a couple hours and not really pushed, um, folks are already asked us to come along. And again, there's it, a new sorry to interrupt. Uh, there's a new comment on the YouTube channel. Someone said, uh, "See you in Philadelphia if I got it, or Pennsylvania." And uh, unfortunately, we're not gonna be in Pennsylvania. But there's somebody who's like super stoked for us to go to the East Coast. So future East Coast tour. Right next time around after the snow goes on our way to Porkfest. Who knows? Woo! Hold that thought, guys. We'll be right back. Can you stick with us for another segment? Of course. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's Whoever posted that from PA probably thinks that um, you're coming to our event. Oh! oh what's the event? Uh, J.P. Freeman is coming from, uh, from New Hampshire. We have like 15 people getting together. We have Philadelphia Cop Lock, New Jersey Cop Lock. Two different New Jersey Cop Lock groups are all coming together down here. From, from where? Uh, Philadelphia, Shire, New yeah, yeah, some some weird place called New Hampshire. I don't I don't know. Shire, <laughs> Hampshire, never heard of it. <laughs> uh, so never in my life. Uh, um, thanks for celebrating, guys. I appreciate uh, that. Blow blow some my way. 
Yeah, why aren't you celebrating, Derek? I'm in. I'm in a. I'm in a <coughs> non-celebratory zone. Yeah, it's a non-celebratory zone. Exactly. I thought, I thought it's so all weird California because, like, was celebratory. I know, but indoors, it's so weird. Like the uh, environmental enviro Nazis around here, they're like, you gotta separate your trash, and you can't smoke indoors. But then, like, there's sm- people eating off the streets and smoking everywhere outside, like offering. <laughs> Let's remind you again. There is room for one more in here. I'm just saying. <laughs> I know, I know. Thank you. And we have like too many cameras, dude. We have like a dozen cameras. <laughs> we can't even hold them or strap them to our bodies enough. How enough. long is how long is your journey going to be? Seven months. Oh, that's too long. I moved out here to be with my man. You know I can't leave. You. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll stay. Man for the next three months, we'll be in Fresno, and then we'll pick you up for the back half. <clears throat> hey, that could work. There's uh, there I'm curious about joining a cult. There's a guy. Uh, this is so funny. He's um, they're like, oh, it's a family, and I want you to call me Mama Satoy, and uh, you, this will be your papa, and like, there's 20 people living in this one house. I wouldn't do it. Obviously, it sounds crazy, but I wouldn't do it if it weren't so amazing. How far do those obligations go? Is right? it? Uh- it's so weird. You have to write an essay at the end of every month to talk about how you've grown. Like, he won't renew your lease in, unless you... I got to... Next week, Cop Lock Radio, live from the cult house. <laughs> live from the cult house, yeah. Oh, man, I hope so. I got my second interview with him tomorrow. Let's we'll see how it goes. Are you really going to go for it? Hell yeah, man! It's one of the only um, opportunities yeah. I've found, and it's so cheap. I mean, I, I said before I met him, I was like, I'll do anything. And the interview actually ended in his bedroom, and I was like, oh, God, here it comes. <laughs> it wasn't anything like that. He, he didn't uh, ask for any sexual favors yet, so at least uh, I'm, I feel safe for now. I'm going to talk about that. Look forward to. Is it an all-gay cult? <laughs> no, no, there's um, people, I guess. I mean, all the people I've met so far, I think, are, are gay. But I think, I hear there are some straight people in the cult. We'll see. That's what's I don't up. know. I it's, wonder what their, wonder what their parties are like. The things I'll do. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> all right, when we come back, we got a couple of, uh, couple, couple of topics I want to get to. We'll see. Um... Oh, the stop a douchebag confronting a Russian police was awesome. You guys want to talk about that a little bit? <coughs> Share that video? Or you guys oh, want to talk more about that? I might have missed it. You didn't, oh, you didn't see that? Oh, stop a douchebag guys are great. You've seen them before, right? They're, they're videos yeah. where they um, they stop people from driving in places where they're not allowed to drive. <laughs> like walkways and stuff. Stickers on their cars and stuff. Exactly. And then... Um, this time, that group, it's like a YouTube shtick is the thing they do, but this time they confronted a police officer who was driving where he's not allowed to. <laughs> a little different. A little different when they do it that way. And oh. this is in Russia? Your email updates Yeah. updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Oh, yeah. Hey, do you want a more voluntary world? One where people aren't locked up for victimless crimes. Well, I invite you to check out my movie, which just had its third year anniversary this week. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree free online. Watch it free at victimlesscrimespree.com. You can see the reviews. You can even get the director's cut on DVD. It is available on Amazon and even at Walmart. So go pick it up. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Uh, your Viewing is what helps make shows like this possible. So thank you. Thanks that, to everyone who's watched it and shared it. That movie helped make me an anarchist. Woo! Hey. <laughs> well, thank you. A, a demo had a lot to do with that. So thanks for all your inspiration, man. And uh, you know that was just a quick plug to get that out of the way while we have, while we've got some. Uh, hey, Derek. Audience. I uh, shared with him the story of when you and I got arrested together. Oh man. And how when we were in the police department. Yeah, and the cops ask you what you do for a living. Right. You remember what you told them? Yeah, I'm a haberdasher. That's <laughs> <laughs> they were like, what? Me and the cop that was arresting me stumped. I'm like, I was like, I was willing to play along because I thought you were messing with the cops. So I thought you were. Throwing <laughs> I'm like, yeah, he is. And the cops like, I know what that is. I'm like, oh yeah, because I didn't. And he's like, and the other cop that was arresting me didn't do it. It was hilarious. So, telling well, stories. Like, a haberdasher is someone who sells clothing. 
So, yeah. And that's what I did. I worked at JCPenney at the time, and I was so well-dressed because I was on my way to work. And and you can actually hear that in the movie. I think it's even in the trailer. Like I'm like, no, no, you can't arrest me. I'm going to work right now. And he's like, well, well you're, you're not going to make it. Make it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, more, well, hopefully what more. What did they arrest you for? Uh, <laughs> I guess it was disorderly conduct was probably the charge. It's always the charge, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's more you, were when you weren't supposed to be filming. Right, right. Well, it was only I had a six-second warning before they they actually put me in cuffs, so I was not expecting that. That was my first arrest ever, too. So thanks. I was in good company, Ademo. Thanks for being yeah. great for that and too. Of course, I got the felony charge so that they were more distracted with me. Now Most both of you have faced charges before. Yeah, you, you did have the felony charge. That was a little more serious. Are any of you facing charges right now? No, but Brian just wrapped up some shit. I just, I just wrapped up a couple of charges, man. Um, I went against everything I believed in, and I took a plea in my most recent um, case. But uh, hear me out, guys. It was In my mind, it was cheaper to take the plea than it was to appear in court. It cost $30, and me and Dylan Donnelly, a cop block contributor, cop block editor, split yeah. that in half to $15 a piece. And so we said, well, if, we're, if we pay $15 and don't break the law for six months, which we don't do very often anyways, you know, they were, they were getting us on chalk. Um, Doesn't do very often. He's broken all like 15 times in it. I know, right? <laughs> publicly, publicly, at least. Yeah. We were like, whatever, fuck it. And then, so we, we took these pleas out of mere... Con it was like conveniences, man, you know? And it's very... Uh, I didn't feel good about it, but I had this tour to get on with, and I felt like there were more important things to do than hang myself up in some bullshit kangaroo court. Yeah, I've taken a plea deal. I know what it's like. Sometimes it's just an economic calculation. <laughs> Right, and I, I took my I took my major vandalism case all the way to trial, found guilty, and uh, blah blah blah. But if I hadn't had this tour, this one would have gone to trial too. Wait a minute, I, I have yet to take my day in court having plea deals all over the goddamn place. You just said you were found guilty, Brian. Did you did you find it to be worth it to refuse the plea? I mean, were you offered something better than what you ended up with? I was offered like the greatest plea on earth, bro. Three months, unsupervised bench probation. <laughs> When they offered me this plea, to the time the end of my trial was roughly three months. <laughs> so you basically had to suffer the same penalty anyway. Well, I suffered the same penalty, and then I got a three hundred dollar charge for fines, um, which part of it was um, a guilty verdict fee. So there was like a thirty dollar, forty five dollar fine just for being found guilty. Because yeah, why not? <laughs> because <laughs> the justice is free. But yeah, it's a. Uh, and then, but the restitution of it was like a, was lower, I think, or equal to like the being found guilty fee. So if you I have some time over your head right now, then, right, Brian? You've got six months. Are you worry? Uh, no, I've got a year hanging over my head, I think, or some bullshit like that. If I, I'm going on this trip in Mac. I mean, doesn't that make you nervous? So there's a lot of things you can do that wouldn't get him violated in other states. You know, it's the same reason why you left New Hampshire for your year of good behavior. Right. Dinner. So he's kind. Of, it's actually kind of safer for him to be in Mac than it is to be in California. Oh, uh, good point. The thing that would get him in trouble in California that he would, could also get in trouble anywhere else but won't violate his probation because A, they won't know about it, or B, since it's out of the state, it's not going to matter or isn't illegal there. Yeah, and it's not like, you know, if you're arrested for filming in Illinois that they're going to send you all the way back to California just because they heard that you've got charges over there. I mean, it's not right. worth their time. It's not, you know... It's I also something... have to get found guilty before it affects me at all anyways, you know. So they can arrest me all they want for it. But it, oh, until there's an actual guilty verdict... It doesn't affect my probation in any negative way. Plus, didn't yeah, you know? I'm, I'm, dealing, with, I'm dealing with the opposite of that. Three months going to court on a new one, anyway. Yeah, every time they put a cop locker in jail, they get a car. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I heard on the internet. And yeah. so, like, maybe, like, now that Brian is on Mac, they'll think that he's part of the elite cop lock squad, like everybody here. And so, whenever we go to jail, we get cars. That's what, what we just. Yeah, right. Every time we go to jail, we just we get a new car. We get a new car, man. One of the um, where's my car? One of the tools that we pimp a lot on Cop Block Radio is Cell Four One One, created by friend of the show Virgil Baduva. Right. And 
um, you know, this is something that I use. I keep it on my main screen on my uh, Android phone. It works on iPhone and Android. It's only 99 cents, and it's an absolutely invaluable resource if you're a cop blocker or someone who anticipates an encounter with the police sometime in your life. How are you guys using Cell 411? Well, we plan to uh, implement it heavily for the tour uh, because, like you mentioned, uh, we feel that it's not only a great resource, but... Uh, highly valuable to folks who want to not only film the police but have alternatives to replacing some of the other state monopolized services so just think if you've fallen and can't get up instead of calling the EMS who then sends the or 911 who then sends the police fire trucks and then EMS uh, so the first person through your door is a cop with a gun pointed at you uh, you could then instead select to call a list of people you know and trust who would you know come and actually solve a problem as opposed to create some and so aside we plan to use it for cop locking you know before Dio can attest to this Brian Fry's had some experience out in Fresno cop lock where if you don't have a way to communicate you all have to stay together and then the cop locking crew is all one and the cops know where you are and you're like a big black cloud no, not even that though uh, getting yourself in trouble one night uh, I, or one day I went over to my buddy's house and we were like day drinking it was Sunday and I fell asleep at like 5, 6. I woke up at like midnight. And uh, he was asleep. And I was like, well, I'll just walk home. It's only like two miles, whatever. It's Blackstone on Sunday night. There's going to be cops all film. And um, I wasn't like drunk, but I'm sure there was like alcohol like in my area because I like got drunk and then passed out and yeah. then walked home. And uh, I filmed these cops. And they were like pulling people over their car. And then I filmed the same cops a couple minutes later pulling someone else over. And uh, at the end, like I... I wasn't like the best. I called one of the cops like a faggot, and I was just being, I was just more angry than anything, you know, that he didn't answer my question. He just like rolled his window up and drove off, and so he like stopped his car and arrested me for being drunk. He was like, "Well, only uh only drunk people would call the police uh faggots, you know," and um, that was their whole reasoning. So when I asked for breathalyzer, and um, I asked for uh, like all this stuff to go along with it, he uh, it was just like, "We don't have to do any of that." And eventually, a supervisor came out. And um, he was like, you have two options. Go to jail and walk home from the jail or this guy's going to take you home. And so then I was in this position where I walked like 10 miles home from the jail or I let this cop drive me to my apartment. <laughs> and uh, yeah, eventually, so, eventually so I was just like... What if you first? had cell 411? Right, I could have cell 411 my girlfriend who happened to be in the area and she could have shown up with a camera and filmed it all. And you know, at the very minimum. Take, and then taken me home. Me home. Right. You know, it's all for one could have totally negated that whole uh, encounter for me. Right. So those, uh, those random situations and as well as like where we're out in organized groups, we can now like break down even almost to the individual. It's still a backup plan to bring people closer to you if need be. Copblock.org slash M-A-C as in Mac to follow Ademo and Brian on their adventures across the country. Thanks, guys. BlakeDevelopment.net is a global leader in website. So I didn't know if you guys are sticking around or not, so I just wanted to, to leave off with that just in case because I know your time is valuable out there. We're good. Uh, I think we can go to 11. That's what we plan to do. All right, very good. good, good. Glad we got you. So did and, you take the tax-funded ride home? What? I did. Oh. I did. I, de I definitely would take the ride. Yeah. Well, dude, it was right, like, you're right, right for those cars. Four miles. I'd have been like, fuck that pig. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Right? I'd have been asking people walking by to give me a ride home. How about you? How about you? <laughs> no, there's nobody there. I, I had a cop do that to me before, and I had a pack of weed in my pocket. It was really funny. I did not know what to do because I was sitting in the back of the cop car. He was driving me back to my house, and I shrieked oh like weed. I was just waiting for him to turn around and say something, but he never did. Give me your weed. Like yeah, I smell a skunk too. I don't know. <laughs> Must have hit something. I just saw a demo about how I stuffed a bag of weed in the back of a cop car once when I got arrested. And they were asking if it smelled like weed. Like, Does it smell like weed in this car to you? And I was like, not to me, man. I'm like, yeah, dude, you got any? Blaze me out before we stake me into jail? Let's do this. Like, what are you, high? Sounds like the last guy that was in here left some in your seat. That's what I'm getting. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking around. Bring the dog out. So when we come back, uh, do you want to talk about, real quick, uh, my funny encounter in court? Yeah. Bring, make it real. Tell yeah, us what's going on in your world. It, it, was, it was pretty funny. I was telling you guys last week how I'm going to court and I might get off probation early. So oh, did, nice. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it didn't it, happen. I'll tell you how to do it. How do you What's do that? it? Yeah, how do you get off probation early? You just film them. Every time you go in there, they'll get sick of you, dude. Ah, public that's officials, that's you can film them. I got I got thirty day, I got thirty days left, so I'm not really sweating. Yeah, you don't have anybody to go to. <laughs> What's Yo, up? You got any ideas for me? Uh, I was thinking of starting sort of like a. The cops seem pretty friendly around here, as as far as cops go. In San Francisco proper, they seem all right. Outside of San Francisco, Oakland, and those areas, they're a mess. But here, they they sort of leave people alone. I saw some guys out smoking a bowl on the street, and the cop came up and was like, "Hey, guys." You, you know, you can't do that here. It's just people will see you, and you know. So they were like, as friendly as a cop could be, generally. Oh. I'm wondering how I can build relationships with them. Like I was thinking, breakfast with a cop at McDonald's, sort of thing. Down with the hippie, <laughs> bite the hippie. Won't show up. <laughs> you know what do you? Right. Think? I I'll bet a lot of them smoke pot, and I bet a lot of them are, you know, pretty cool generally. I try, we tried to do that here in Cleveland or in Parma, actually, with the, uh, the coffee with a cop thing. They they do that around here a lot. This, uh, is it a waste yeah. of time or is it a real like? Uh, ours like was <laughs> ours was a waste. Yeah, none of them showed up. Uh, I think you. It's kind of iffy, Derek. The uh, the cops in San Francisco are so used to the liberated just environment, as I'm sure you. I don't know how long you've been there, like a month or an hour or so. Two oh, months. Yeah. Almost a, month. Almost a month. You've kind of noticed it's a little bit more liberated than other areas of the of America. Yeah, I'm blown away. I mean, people are out in Dolores Park drinking beers, drinking bottles of wine, smoking yeah. weed, and throwing frisbees. The cops walk right through, like doo doo doo. You know, I, I don't see anything. Because they uh, they have more important things to worry about than pot smokers, and uh, they should have more important things. I was up, I was up to a bank protest, and the cops like took a big jar of weed from these, like, teenagers, and was just, like, didn't want to do the paperwork, so we put it on the ground and told them to leave, which is, like, I'm going to leave, and then you can come back and get your weed. Well, they didn't come back and get their weed, so I went back and got their weed. <laughs> 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 All right, just keep going, bitch. <laughs> but I think, you know, the cops would be really kind of receptive to what you're talking about if you, you know, if you're, like, because they're, they're, like, really friendly cops up there. Yeah, they are friendly cops around here in uh, San Fran. What we're talking about how to build relationships with some of the cops. Because I'm thinking, like, I like having a frenemy relationship with the Keen police. I know them by first name, you know, and we're not friends, but we're definitely still not enemies. And I feel like they would have a little bit of respect for me if they saw that I was video recording and they know who I am. I've introduced myself. So I proposed this idea to a demo on the break of, you know, what do you think of breakfast with a cop? And what do you think, a demo? I think it'd be all right. I mean, I don't know. It could be a long breakfast, depending on the cop. <laughs> You could be like uh, pulling that beer off or something. What do you mean? Well, you know, like John Patty, you know that Manchester cop. Like that'd be a long breakfast. Or uh, the uh, guy from Greenfield. Um, uh, I forget his name now, but anywho, you know, those would be longs. But like maybe uh, Houston from like Zanesville. Or I know like Peter had breakfast with the one cop that, or coffee that like drug him out of a courtroom. And so I guess it's circumstantial to each case. I don't know if it's something that I would want to divulge a lot of my time to just because of my experience with cops is normally that they're not that open. You well, know? How do you think I can do the most good in my new city? I want, I want to do something good for the community, f to build relationships with the police. I want to do some cop blocking, but I feel kind of alone out here. So I'm, I'm looking for a way to sort of build that community. What do you think? A demo brought up long breakfast avoid that by setting it up like speed dating. You'd have to get a few <laughs> cops involved, obviously. But five minutes, boom, one question, boom, boom, boom. Keep and five <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, that's see, a great see, idea. I think this is the problem with trying to have breakfast with a cop is if they show up, they're not going to show up as tough guy cop. They're going to show up as Mr. Community Service cop yeah. that's, that's playing the good cop role. And then what happens when you see that cop uh, a week later arresting somebody violently. like That's where you get to show the double... Hopefully you uh, have some sort of record of this breakfast as well, you know, because I don't interact with the police off-camera very often. Yeah, but if you do that, then you want to talk. That's, 
that's another part of it too, though, Brian, because they won't say nothing on camera that they, that they get in trouble for. They won't say nothing. They won't be open about the things that are obviously bothering them too about the whole situation. You know what I mean? A cop they, does try. Probably just investigating you. I get. <laughs> anyway, I, I guess my advice would be the same for you to anybody that's new to an area or wants to start a cop block new in the area. And I would suggest starting with like holding a meetup at a location and trying to get people to come there and just talk about it. And then once the group gets big enough, you'd be like. You know, if every Tuesday you're handing out flyers for your meetup on Tuesday night to come and talk about cop locking or police issues, and then eventually when the group's 15 or 20 people, you can say, hey, maybe we should get together on Saturday night and go out cop locking. You know, maybe three or four of them will, and then it builds off of that and that and da-da-da-da-da. No, I just had an idea. There's a ton of uh, young homeless people in San Francisco, and especially where I'm at right now, hate Ashbury. This is like the center of the oh, yeah. summer of That's love. That's where they go, yeah. Yeah, and this is where, I mean, every other person that you're walking down the street is like, yo, shrooms, you want some LSD? You want some weed? <laughs> so, All I'm, right, we'll see ya. We're <laughs> so I'm thinking... I just got to go like, find a cash machine. <laughs> <laughs> they sound, I mean, they, they are homeless, but they have cell phones. They have uh, the ability to have cell 411. So what I'm thinking is show them my QR code, get connected, via cell 411 if there is an incident I can quickly respond maybe that's the way I need to, to build relationships here is like probably, that would definitely be able, that'd be a way to start getting content for like police actions you know when they're har harassing the homeless but like hey if they're harassing the ho harassing you you can ping me and I'll try to come film you if possible yeah I think that would be well more worth my time than going to breakfast with cops because I know they're not going to be honest with me anyway if you uh, if you utilize the homeless community in that way, you're tapping into like a really vast network, and uh, I don't notice cross every, country. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, San Francisco's homeless network is very uh, connected, and they're very. Uh, if if you're in with them, you're in with them, and they'll help you. Like I don't I don't uh, deal on the black market in San Francisco unless I'm talking to homeless people usually, because I know like I've I've done enough business in San Francisco to know that they're the ones that'll get you what you want for the prices you want, and they know everybody. And so if you get these people filming the police, every cop in San Francisco eventually is going to be on camera because there's so many and they're so connected. Well, you're from this area, Brian. What would you say is the biggest problem with, with police around here? Well, I'm from the Central, I'm from the Central Valley. It's about uh, three hours from you. I've, uh, I've been to San Francisco often throughout my life, though. I think the biggest problem um, is the criminalization, usually, of, of homeless people is a big problem. And... Uh, but then another thing is just, like, cops are trained. <coughs> it's The problem starts at the academy. So these guys are going to come out uh, a, a mindless drone, and that's the root of the issue is we can have as many breakfasts with cops as we want, and uh, they'll put the good guy face on with no cameras, like you guys all said, and then they'll go out and violently sure. arrest somebody because they, they still think that that is okay by their job description, by their training, from their understanding of the world. You know, that sort of leads into one of the topics I wanted to get to later, but maybe before you guys go, I could get your thoughts on it. Where are all the good cops? You say it starts mm -hmm. with the training. Are there any good cops left? And if so, how do we find them? How do we network with them? Well, that's kind of a little image of our tour, you know. We're like, hey, let's go look for the good cops, you know. Like, we don't think good cops do these bad things, and we don't think good cops would work for this institution that's so connected with the government that controls a monopoly on this service that also has no accountability and no sense of justice that it implies or enforces on others on themselves. And so we're out there looking for the good cop. We'll let you guys know when we find them. Uh, this might just be the first Mac tour and the first Mac of many Macs, and so uh, maybe uh, one of us will find it. You said you have too much gear. Talk a little bit about what kind of gear you've got. I saw a brief summary of it in the video that you've got uh, explaining, Mac, but it looks like you guys have a pretty sick green screen. Your lighting situation's really good because it looks so professional. Um, what are you using? Um, well, a, a demo had a green screen and some pretty dope lights already when I got here, but I brought um, two action cameras, a GoPro, a handheld video camera, my cell phone, which, crazy, just like will go live right to my YouTube channel, at the push of a button. Um, but then we've also just got, like, silly props. Like, we bought uh, these masks, you know? They're up here. Hang on, I'll grab them. Right, so, yeah, we both have two DLSR cameras with shotgun yeah, mics yeah. and mounts. He talked yeah. about the action cameras and GoPros. And uh, we both have two Mac laptops. And I have an iMac as well as a Dell. So. Tell me a little bit about the importance of the shotgun mics. 
uh, very clear audio, you know, very directional, very focused, and cut down on wind and, and or background noise. <laughs> oh, man. Stop locking the police near you soon. Because, like, you should be happy when you film the police. <laughs> probably cool. You should be cool and happy. Do you guys plan on wearing those smiley face masks while you're actually filming the police? Is I that is oh, a yeah, that's how Brian wants to do. Dude, definitely. At least you know, at least uh, every now and again. I gotta cut out a little hole for mine uh, so we can smoke. <laughs> is the goal to like disarm the police uh, emotionally to show like, hey, I I'm someone with good intentions. I'm wearing a big smiley face here while I film you. Well, part part of me is uh thinks like. That would be the overall intention, but I think the fact that we're covering our faces, regardless of what the expression is, is going to put the cop on guard a little bit. It's going to piss him off. And in I, play, tried, I tried like, that with an anonymous mask, and uh, the cop showed up at my house two hours later. They ran my plates, and dude, they I showed up. Uh, I wouldn't wear like a mask at a protest. I would wear a bandana, because masks are for children. <laughs> but I would definitely like wear a mask like on some sort of like a uh, gag, film the police, like big smiley face. Do it up, kind yeah. of thing. When the cops are laughing at me, I'm gonna be like, "If you think I look silly, yeah, right. Wait till you see yourself on YouTube." <laughs> Out of all the gear you've got, what do you think is the most valuable tool in your utility belt? A demo. <laughs> Each other, man. You know, minds. The ability to like bounce an idea off of somebody and then have it come back, like shot down, or even like not shot down, but like even better. Who are some of your sponsors? Who, who sponsored this? Matt? Well, LRN.FM is uh, one of our sponsors, or, which is what is bringing you some of our voices here today. And uh, very proud to be on board with them again. They've helped us out, myself out in some other projects before. And uh, Ian is a good friend of mine. Uh, as well as Freekeen.com, which uh, Derek is familiar with. Uh, great blog, Liberty in their lifetime up there in Keene, New Hampshire. Uh, Countercurrent News and Cell 411, which which is uh, something you were talking about uh, previously. So, got a good solid base of advertisers, and uh, it should be uh, enough to get us. It's got us this far, obviously, in in Mac and heading onto the road. But uh, we're gonna operate on a shoestring budget, like always, and try to maximize every dollar we got and create good content. And who who was the man who made the the song that you guys play in your Mac rollout video, the Good Cops song? Rob Hustle. Listen up, listen up. If you ain't locking up the bad cops, you ain't up. Yeah, this one. So Rob Hustle, that name is familiar. He's done other cop locking uh, songs, right? He did another song. Uh, <laughs> I got allergies out here in Ohio, but um, I forget it. It's called, called it's called When You Call the Cops. Yeah, call the cops. Oh, yeah, this is what happens when you call the cops, right? This is what happens when you call the cops. The sick song, guys. If you violate it and you won't get shot. <laughs> I'll be following your adventures at coplock.org slash Mac. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Derek. No how. All right, rock on. Be safe out there. I'll be thinking of you. We'll be here. And I'll see you in a couple of months, maybe. Maybe when you, uh, you visit, you know? Yeah, if we don't bring Mac up there, we'll definitely ride Forrest up the coast or down or whatever. Are you guys are you guys stopping your tour in Colorado, or are you just going through Colorado? We're gonna stop in Colorado, and then no, what do we go after I, that is question. I mean, are you are you done there? Is that the end of the tour? Tour is done. Where we go from there is anybody's. If, if anybody could ever convince you to leave Colorado, you'll go there. <laughs> Yeah, or we'll start the cop lock headquarters right away, and then someone else can go and max and do something. Maybe you and Dio want to do a tour. Oh, dude. There you go. There's know. your East Coast tour. I don't want to have to bury Dio. Dio, <laughs> you think Dio might die him? if he goes on tour. I don't think so. I don't know, man. I, I, was, just, right. I was just looking at an RV today. If I do, I die happy, man. <laughs> I die happy, man. Chat room doing man. what I love. They say they want one. They want what? The masks. Yeah, Walmart, yo. Like really? Two, three bucks, something like that. What did that. I say? Two dollars? Three bucks, I don't know. They look just like the emojis. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's what it's all about. It's all about. What it's all about. Yeah, yeah. Think of what I'm wearing this with the cop lock, the cop uniform, Dio. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be awesome. 
Man, I hope I can make it down to Zanesville on the 25th and meet up with you guys, man. That is officer friendly. That's awesome. Right. Hey, well, thanks for all the good ideas. Thanks for all the, the content and the good vibes. I appreciate it. And uh, I wish you well on your journey, guys. Thanks, dude. Thank Take you. Care. Later. Thank you. Peace. See you, dudes. Right on. Rich, Freedom's Phoenix, and don't Sadly, try to... I'm going to miss that Zanesville. More yeah, it says when I leave. is coming up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. And the broadcast. Oh. Oh. The Liberty.